So this is Miranda, one of the strangest moons in the solar system. And right behind it, you're about to see one of the strangest planets, the planet Uranus. Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about some of the major discoveries from the last few months in regards to this beautiful planet that we actually still know so little about. But more specifically, we're going to be focusing on two major discoveries. One are the X-rays coming from this planet, and two are the studies in regards to the magnetosphere of this planet. And, well, let's start with the X-rays. With this beautiful picture right here, where the pink represents the X-rays, pretty much summarizing everything. Very recently, scientists studying the data from Uranus, the data collected over the years, actually over decades, by the beautiful Chandra X-ray Observatory, detected quite a lot of X-rays emanating from the surface of the planet and possibly even from the rings of this planet. And though it does sound unusual, it actually isn't, because Jupiter and Saturn also have been caught emitting X-rays in the past. But before we go on, well, let's start with the obvious. The rings. Yes, Uranus has rings, so does Neptune, so does Jupiter, and so does, obviously, Saturn. Even though generally we don't really think of Uranus as being a ring planet, it definitely is one, and you can even clearly see them right here in this simulation in Space Engine. But unlike the rings of Saturn, well, first of all, they're much smaller, but second of all, they contain different stuff on the inside. They're also extremely, extremely dark. Very, very dark. And that's why it's so difficult to see them. Both Neptune and Uranus seem to contain somewhat similar rings. And unlike Saturn's rings, the rings of Uranus and Neptune are really dark, and I'll explain to you why, because it does relate to some of the recent discoveries we're talking about today. But since, unfortunately, Voyager 2 is the only probe to ever visit this system and was only here for a very brief period of time, we still have a pretty limited knowledge of these rings, and most of the studies in regards to these rings and what happens around Uranus, for the most part, has since been done by various telescopes, such as Hubble, and so there are still a lot of things we don't really understand. But back to X-rays. So, as I mentioned previously, we've detected X-rays coming from Saturn as well, and also from Jupiter. But in this case, the scientists believe that, for the most part, the X-rays are very likely just the reflections from the upper atmosphere of the solar X-rays, or the X-rays that originally came from the Sun and then got reflected by the atmosphere of Jupiter and Saturn. And so some of these detections were very likely also quite similar. Some of these X-rays detected in the last few years probably also came from the Sun. But the scientists believe that not all of them came from the Sun. As a matter of fact, there's also a very likely possibility that the rings are also responsible for creating some of these X-rays. And we know that this is exactly what happens around Saturn. In the past, when studying Saturn, the scientists also realized that a lot of these X-rays were really coming from the rings and not just from the planet. And it was pretty clear to the scientists that a lot of this X-ray glow was actually coming because the rings were actively interacting with the magnetic field of Saturn, and as various energetic particles collided with these rings, they essentially created X-rays that were visible from very far distances. And in case of Saturn, most of this X-ray production was done by the charged electrons as they interacted with oxygen atoms located inside the water icy rings, which then ended up producing this beautiful radiation you see right here. And so if it can happen around Saturn, it's quite possible that it might also happen around Neptune and Uranus as well. But there's another possible source for this X-ray radiation, and that's the aurora, the so-called northern and southern lights. Now, originally, the aurora on Uranus were detected once again by the Voyager probe, but they were also later seen by the Hubble telescope as well. And so we know that Uranus also has quite a lot of these aurora, or essentially these extremely powerful light shows, which do tend to produce X-rays as well. But the thing is, aurora on planets like Jupiter, and in this case Uranus, are not really produced in the same way as they're produced on Earth. The charged particles that produce aurora on Earth come from the Sun. But for Jupiter and Uranus, the charged particles actually come from the vicinity. They come from the interaction with the magnetic field, and very likely with a lot of other material, including the rings and the moons surrounding the area. And although today scientists generally understand how the Jupiter's aurora are made and have a pretty good explanation for what we're observing there as well, for Uranus, this is still a bit of a mystery. And mostly because the aurora and obviously the X-rays produced by the aurora directly depend on the magnetic field produced by the planet. And that's where we come to the second mystery and something that we don't really understand about both Uranus and Neptune. How is it that these two planets have such a strong magnetosphere, and what exactly generates it on the inside? 
So, for example, we know that for Earth, the magnetosphere is most likely generated by the circulation of the liquid iron core, where the churning of the electrically charged material produces the magnetosphere that we have on the planet. For Jupiter and Saturn, something similar happens on the inside, except that it's not really iron this time, but it's metallic hydrogen. As you compress hydrogen and as it reaches a certain condition, it starts having metallic properties and acquires charge. And so the churning of a tremendous amount of hydrogen on the inside generates really powerful magnetic fields around Jupiter and Saturn. But Uranus and Neptune have something completely different going on, and that's where the mystery for the scientist begins. And first of all, well, here's a comparison. Here's the Earth's magnetosphere, with north and south being just a little bit misaligned with the rotation of the planet. But for Uranus and Neptune, not only is it misaligned in terms of their rotation, but it's also not really in the center of the planet either. On Uranus, the angle here is about 59 degrees, on Neptune it's about 47 degrees. And for both planets, the center is completely off as well. In this case, it's about 13,000 kilometers away from the physical center of the planet. Yet at the same time, both planets still have an extremely powerful magnetosphere, much stronger than the one on Earth. With Uranus having the magnetosphere that's about double the strength of the one on Neptune. But what's really strange here is that because of this unusual alignment, the magnetic field in the southern hemisphere of Uranus is much much weaker than the strength in the north, and something similar happens on Neptune as well. It's actually about five times as strong on one side compared to the other. And because of this strange misalignment of the magnetic lines compared to some of the other planets, every single day on Uranus, the planet's magnetic lines align with the solar wind coming from the sun, and because of this, the planet opens up to a lot of the solar radiation, which basically means that this planet and all of its moons get bombarded by the solar radiation at least once a day. And if something like this was ever happening around planet Earth, well, it's very unlikely that the life would ever evolve here. But since both Neptune and Uranus have these very strangely aligned magnetic fields, today scientists believe that maybe this is just a common feature for many different ice giants. Ice giants being these distant gas giants that are usually smaller in mass than Jupiter and Saturn. But the other question here is of course, so what creates this magnetosphere and why is it so strangely shifted? Now this currently has no answer, but in the last few years, Scientists have conducted several different studies, including this recent study from just a few days ago, where they tried to recreate the materials we might detect inside a typical ice giant, specifically highly pressurized ammonia and highly pressurized water, and possibly some other ices as well. With the main goal being a creation of what's known as the super ionic water or super ionic ammonia, or really super ionic ice. In this case, this is actually related to one of the videos I made previously about the discovery of a new type of ice that you can find somewhere right there. But in a nutshell, what the scientists are trying to make is basically water or ammonia under extreme pressures, and they're trying to see if it actually starts changing its properties. With the current belief being that if, for example, one of these super ionic liquids starts becoming more viscous and starts to flow much slower, it might actually explain why there is such an unusual magnetosphere inside these planets. If, for example, let's just say ionic water becomes either really viscous in certain conditions or flows really easily in other conditions, this would suddenly allow the scientists to explain why there is such an unusual misbalance when it comes to the magnetosphere of these planets. So basically, let's just say this ionic water becomes really viscous if you suddenly change just a little bit of its pressure. This means that it's going to flow really easily on one side of the planet, but become kind of like honey, very viscous on the other side. Which would create larger chunks on one side compared to the other side, which would also shift the magnetosphere to possibly one direction. But that's of course just a theory. A science theory. Okay, that doesn't sound as good as game theory. Anyway. The point is that even today, including this study, the scientists haven't discovered such properties. They tried this with ammonia, and superionic ammonia does not become viscous enough to explain any of these observations. Which of course, once again means that, currently, we have no idea how these magnetospheres of ice giants are created. So the explanation here still involves a lot of ionic liquids, so possibly water, methane, maybe ammonia, but it's not really clear why exactly is it that it's so one-sided, why is it shifted to a single direction. Now, it probably does involve these exotic ices and their exotic properties of these ices that I've discussed in the previous video, but the details and the explanation is just not there. It's still a really, really big mystery. 
But it's a mystery that's kind of worth solving because if this is what happens inside these ice giants, it means that many of these ice giants somewhere out there in other star systems will probably have something similar going on. And this could be even true of some of these smaller planets, including what we refer to as a super Earth. If these ionic liquids can form on surfaces of these other planets, they will probably start experiencing some really similar magnetic effects. With magnetic fields being very misaligned and possibly behaving in a way that we don't really expect them to behave. But for now, this is not a mystery anyone has an answer to. Which once again means that, well, there needs to be a mission to these planets, a mission to Neptune, a mission to Uranus, and possibly even more missions to study their moons. A lot of mysteries here, a lot of really really cool explanations for how magnetic fields are generated in ways that are different from planet Earth and from planets like Jupiter and Saturn, and also a lot of other mysteries that will definitely help us, well, learn a lot about the universe, but also probably develop some new technologies that we never really thought possible. And so the fact that no one is actually planning any major missions here yet is unfortunate. But hopefully a space agency somewhere out there decides to launch something sometime soon and hopefully we'll actually get to explore these planets in the next few decades. For now, well, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention in this video. There's some x-rays we've detected, we also think that magnetosphere might play a role in the creation of these x-rays, but how the magnetosphere is generated around them is a question nobody has an answer to. Once we learn more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you might have not known. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful Persian t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.